Howdy, Philly YouTubers. My name is Australian. Today, we're going to talk about some things that you can do in Battlefield to help keep it interesting. Now, my buddy Izzy made a video like this a couple days ago, and I feel like he missed some things, so I'm going to fill in the gaps. If you'd like to check out his video, it will be in the description below. Now, this one I call Super Revenge. Whenever someone kills you, you have to try your hardest to kill them back in the most humiliating way possible. Whether it be by you calving, swaving, maving, any way that you possibly can, the one that you're going to come across the most is nice. But do not, and I repeat, do not forget to teabag. You forget to teabag, and the whole thing gets f up. Now this one I like to call battle buddy. What you have to do is you have to pick someone in your squad to always follow like a baby duckling. You must always stay by their side and keep your defibs ready for emergencies. Even if these people really, 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 really suck, you still have to stick by them until they quit. That is the only caveat until they quit. If they quit, it's all done. They don't get your battle buddy anymore. I mean, who doesn't want a battle buddy in this era? They're like the greatest thing ever. You have someone dedicated to reviving you and you go down. You have someone that's always there to talk to and you have someone to touch your- Now this next one I like to call Mav touching or Mav pestering. It's when you can find a sniper on a map and dedicate your entire life to screwing with this sniper's day. Now some people don't know this, but the Mav can actually push people. So if they're near the edge of a building, you can literally push them off the building. 90% of the time, a sniper that's camping on top of a building will have a spawn beacon up there. So you can do this constantly. The second that they hit the ground, they'll be like, okay, I guess my sniping career is done. Let me die and respawn on my spawn beacon and do it again. And you, it's just the greatest thing ever. Dedicating 30 minutes of your life in a conquest game on Dawnbreaker, screwing with snipers. It's the greatest thing ever. I would highly suggest it to anyone who has the MAV unlocked. Not to mention, not a whole lot of people know that the MAV can actually shoot things like spawn beacons and C4 and mines and all the other goodies that explode. You can actually get kills with your MAV. And that brings back to my whole super revenge thing where if you have a sniper that is just like out in the, the boondocks that's standing next to his claymore, Problem solved. Now this other one's kind of touch and go and really isn't meant to be taken seriously, but there are some objects in the game that you can technically push around. Whenever you chop down a tree, you can push the tree around literally with your feet for a while. You can do this with all kinds of things in the game. Lawn chairs, garbage cans, uh, cremated remains of friendlies, you know, stuff like that. I do this every now and then and see how long I can go with actually pulling around a tree or a trash can or something of that nature. It is a very entertaining thing to do and you will die a lot. but you feel good about it because you know that you were distracted by the tree on your side and your battle buddy on your left and your super revenge thing that you got to do and all the other things that I've talked about previously in the video. That is called a callback. I mean, how menacing would it be to look off in the distance and there is a tree moving towards you with a person behind it shooting his LMG? That would be probably one of the most scariest things ever and make me rage quit. So another one that I like to do, and again, this isn't one that's supposed to be taken seriously, is I like to fly a chopper in the most ridiculous ridiculous ways possible. I like to go to say world height and just do loop-de-loops over and over and over until I crash. It is somewhat entertaining and it can help you learn a lot of the mechanics of a chopper if you haven't been able to fly a chopper. Since the most recent patch that they added the ability to flip over choppers, it has added a whole new avenue to flying choppers. If you got three minutes to kill before you have to leave to go to work, you know, just hop on there and turn your chopper a couple times, test range. It's great. Now this last one is the one that I honestly do the most. A lot of you who are familiar with my videos will probably know that I do this. In Battlefield, you can earn a dog tag for for getting 500 kills with a weapon and my goal by the end of let's say Battlefield 4's life cycle is I want to master every single gun in the game. Now for me some are aggravating enough that I've kind of given up let's say the SR338 which is that semi-auto sniper rifle type thing I'm not exactly sure where that gun fits in the game but I have used it I say I have 250 kills with it but I gave up after that. Along with the majority of the snipers where if you're playing a game and you're not very good at sniping you can maybe get 10 kills a game whereas you know if I'm using an automatic weapon I can get upwards of 20 30 even 40 sometimes so far in battlefield I have 64 mastery dog tags this progression of always using a new weapon after 500 kills has kept the game interesting for me for well over a thousand hours now of course when you're going for that win you whip out your best weapon and I would say that my personal favorite weapon is the m416 I think I have somewhere around 800 kills with 
with that weapon. Something I've noticed that a lot of other people do is they don't use other classes. They'll have a hundred service stars with, say, the medic, but like three or four service stars with all of the rest of them. Me, personally, I like to keep my service stars around the same. Right now, I have 39 service stars for all four of the classes. Now, me, personally, when I look at someone's stats and I see that their stars are perfectly aligned or at least within five service stars of each other, I think that that person really knows how to play every single role in Battlefield really well. Don't get me wrong, you don't know how everyone plays by looking at their stats. You can get a good general idea, but the majority of the time, if they have a million service stars in this and five service stars in this, you know, that person usually plays that role and they're not going to do too hot in other roles. I want to thank you all for watching. If you made it to this part of the video, please put the word master in your comment in the comment section below so that I know that you watched the video all the way to the end and are the best viewer and subscriber ever. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Really help me and my channel out. That is all. I do this uh, uh, uh. whether that be you cabbing you cabbing <laughs>